hockey, a game of grace, a game of courage, a game of majesty. It is a joining of fire and ice, resulting in a timeless pageant, magnificent and unalterable. Well, sort of, anyway. The lighter side, a different look at a daring game. Throughout North America, hockey attracts millions of fans every year. Why? Well, one reason is the game's blend of action and excitement. Hockey players are virtuoso performers. When a game starts, the tempo builds, and as the events move to a crescendo, the results are often classical. Sure, booms and crashes are a part of hockey, but do you know what the game really sounds like? Listen now to the sounds of hockey on the lighter side. From the sounds of hockey to some astonishing sights, there's no greater treat to the eye than the ice magic of a performer like Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky has had an amazing impact on the NHL as eight consecutive Hart trophies all attest. That's eight straight awards as the league's most valuable player. Wayne Gretzky, along with the likes of a Mario Lemieux or a Denny Savard, has just the right scoring touch, and it's a light touch at that. So in keeping with that, the lighter side now pays tribute to all the Icemen who cometh forth night after night in the NHL and score with style.
go, boys. You're doing just fine. But hey, you've got those poor goaltenders all tied up in knots. Now, if you're feeling kind of tied up, or maybe a little stiff, take a trip to the rink. In hockey, the surprises come quicker than you might think. <laughs> uncertain the outcome may be, always remember that when treading ice, there are absolutely no guarantees. The new kid in town. Promotion to the NHL is the dream of every young player. But for rookies, reaching that pinnacle also means an initiation to hockey's most elite fraternity. It's as far as... Uh... Rookies coming into the league right now, we, we have a, maybe a team dinner and uh, have everyone go out and then at the end of the dinner after everyone's ordered up and had uh, uh, the most expensive things on the menu, they have the rookie pay for the meal. <laughs> and it's really a shocker, usually it's about a thousand bucks. It's back when you're uh, you know, a 16 year old and you're playing junior B or junior A is when they really get out here, you know the, you know, the shaving's the big thing, you know, shaving the hair. If there was a guy, a rookie called up, for a, for a game replacing and it's one of the injured veterans or something like that. We, we used to make him be the first one to walk out, you know, on the ice. And what would happen is instead of uh, going on the ice, uh, what we'd, we'd do, we'd let him go out first and we'd make like we're coming after. So he'd be ripping around the ice and we'd all be standing there watching him. And he's <laughs> going like a bat out of heck and uh, everybody's standing there watching him skate around the ice by himself. A word from our sponsor. Hello, friends. John Davidson here, and I'd like to tell you about JD's famous, and I mean famous, goaltender school. That's where you learn to put yourself in the way of six ounces of frozen vulcanized rubber traveling at speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour. And that's just where the fun starts. At JD's famous goaltender school, you'll have more shots taken at you than Kurt Baldheim. You'll learn grace and poise. We'll hone your reflexes to pinpoint perfection. Hmm, still got it. Working with your teammates is so important that at JD's, we'll teach you how to get close to them in a very special way. 
remember, at the famous goaltender school, we emphasize not just on the ice training, but off the ice as well. And I will personally instruct you on training habits and proper diet. That's JD's famous goaltender school, where you learn how to eat pucks and like it. In hockey, the Stanley Cup playoffs are the ultimate goal. It's the best against the best in pursuit of the game's most coveted prize. In search of the Stanley Cup, few teams have known more twists and turns than the Washington Capitals. In 1987, in the seventh game of their divisional semifinals, the Caps faced the Islanders, and all the omens pointed to an unusual evening. In this game, goaltending would be key. Bob Mason of Washington matched against Kelly Rudy of New York. From the start, the Capitals took it to the Islanders, mounting a strong attack while the Isles did their best to counter. But despite all the defensive heroics, goals were inevitable. Fashion is stopped by Mason. That's behind the net. Rubbed out by this. Boyd shot by Grant Martin. A good move. Walks in front of shot. And a goal! Late in the second period, Washington led 2-1. But with time dwindling in the third, the Islanders rallied. Across the line. Trottier's in. He scores! Brian Trottier's goal, with less than six minutes left in regulation, set the stage for a remarkable sequence of events. This game was in overtime. You are entering a dimension, not only of sight and sound, but of mind. One goal is the difference between glory and oblivion. In this, the OT zone. One 20-minute overtime leads to another and another. Neither team gives way. That's the signpost up ahead, and this is the OT zone. And now Deneen moves it ahead to center ice. Alan Kerr, a wrist shot, a sizzler, a save by Mason. Christian on right away. The Bobby Gould, a wrist shot, long save by Rudy. Rebound, Miller a shot, he's denied. LaFontaine walks it around Smith, he fires. Mason the pad save, rebound shot, that block, another drive, and Mason has caught the puck. Here's Gartner to chase it, centers it, a shot by Christian, is blocked by the pad of Rudy. An incredible number of shots have been taken in a game which now goes into a fourth overtime. Finally, more than six hours after it began, the struggle ends. At the point, Denis. Uncharted territory, known as the OT zone. But for the Washington Capitals, 1988 brought a fresh chance at redemption. Once again, the Caps were in the seventh game of the divisional semifinal, this time against the Orange and Black of Philadelphia. Yet the Washington hopes seemed slim as the Flyers took a 3 to nothing lead in the second period. Still, the Caps were capable of a comeback. Now Prop flips to the blue line, kept in by Hatcher, slap shot, and a goal! The Caps did come back tying the game late in the second period and then jumping out to a 4-3 lead early in the third. It seemed victory was at hand, but joy is sometimes only temporary in Stanley Cup hockey. Here's Zezel leaning in to work the draw against Hunter. The puck comes back to Marsh. A shot. He scores! Marsh from the blue line. 
The game is tied. Once again, the Washington Capitals are entering a dimension known as the OT zone. Yes, overtime, but finally with a different twist. Submitted once more for your approval. Joy and redemption of a particular type. A type only found filed under only cup playoffs in the compendium known as the OT Zone. Whether it's the regular season or playoffs, hockey is filled with the unusual. Sooner or later, the oddities are gonna get you. Trouble on the ice takes many forms indeed, but when hobgoblins play, strange doings are often in store. Hockey spirits will make pucks vanish as they play their tricks galore. <laughs> Of solving. It got lodged actually right in the Now there's the first. Call Ripley. I've never seen that one. Call Mr. Ripley if you will, but when sticks are crossed, all may be lost. <laughs> Frightful forces are apt to surface at the goal, and these nasties can take a terrible toll. Speak the charms and have your say, but always beware of the ricochet. A goaltender's nightmare as he sleeps upon his cot. A blistering, unstoppable slap shot! Up the middle comes Larson. Drives a long way and scores! From the red line at center ice, Reed Larson put it by Chevrier to make it 2 nothing Boston, a 90-footer. Too bad it's not basketball. We've got uh, three for that one, 90 goals. <laughs> In the category of unlikely goals, one of hockey's most unusual was also one of its greatest, as Philadelphia's Juan Heck. Just slipped it in. Before you guys say anything, I was aiming for that corner. <laughs> Oftentimes, net gains or losses in hockey are decided around the goal. But when it comes to watching the game, sometimes newcomers have trouble following the puck. That little disc can be awfully elusive. Now, one idea would be to use a big ball, but the lighter side has a different thought. Instead of scoring pucks, how about scoring men? Then, hockey might look something like this. Well, all things considered, we're probably better off with that little puck after all. <laughs> now, if you think all that action's funny, then you ought to check out the lighter side of the timeout. Say, did you hear the one about the dumb hockey player who won a gold medal at the Olympics? He was so proud he had it bronzed. <laughs> okay, how about the hockey player who bought a set of snow tires? The only problem was they melted on the way home. Jeez, you're tough. How about the hockey player whose wife is such a bad cook, all she can make for dinner is reservations? <laughs> I thought it was tough on the ice. Sometimes, laughter isn't always earthbound. 
At times, a good joke or gag can really take flight when a team is on the road. First rule, never fall asleep on an airplane. I recall falling asleep on a plane and uh, waking up with half a tie and things like that. Then you uh, take the tie off and all of a sudden the coach sees you and says, oh, you don't have a tie, that's too fine, that's $25 fine. A new guy on our team, Glenn Wesley, he uh, fell asleep on the flight to Toronto and he woke up and he had a uh, pile of shaving cream in his hair. He didn't realize it until he walked all the way through the airport and onto the bus. That's when he finally found out it was a, a record for time and distance. <laughs> My favorite is when we, you grab your boarding pass, we're all sitting around waiting for a plane in a busy airport like O'Hare. We'll bring out some fishing line or some sewing uh, uh, line and what we'll do is we'll attach a line to uh, the boarding pass, put a five dollar bill in it, put it over the middle of the hallway, put the string of light along the floor, put it underneath your foot. People walk by and they see this boarding pass of five dollars and they bend over to pick it up and you just pull the line underneath your foot and it pulls away from them. And then obviously you have 20 guys plus, you know, other people that are waiting for the plane just sitting there, you know, bearing down with laughter. In hockey, in sports, in life for that matter, laughter helps make it all that much more pleasant. And in the great game of hockey, the fans do their best to get into the act. Whether it's the costume capers of a devil in disguise, or just a fan whose team is on the rise, there's something about a special look. Excuse me. Excuse me, miss? Is that the way you look? 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 Is that really the way that you look now? Oh, darling, darling, is that the way you look? Is that really your eyes? Is that really your hair? Is that really the way you walk on by? All those the clothes you wear. Oh, darling, darling, is that the way you look? I mean, is that the way you really look? Is that the way you look? Is that the way you look? Baby, baby, I'm dreaming, but I'll be bound. Whoever wakes me up, I wanna knock him down. Oh, darling, darling, is that the way you look? The real beauty of hockey is on the ice. So here's to everyone who makes the marvelous spectacle come alive. Race under pressure and the ability to laugh. Two aspects of the game in which it pays to make sure your edge is always played sharp. In hockey, you're up one minute and down the next. So if you take a fall, just make sure to land on the lighter side. After all, the ice can be very slippery. As 
John Davidson here. <laughs> I don't think that one would go over so good. Instructed by such gold innings, greats. Uh -huh. 